This week's episode is brought to you by SwordfishGear.com, your number one source for deep drop swordfish tackle, including hooks, leaders, lights, and custom swordfish rods, featuring Winthrop, adjustable butts, and roller tips. All orders over $50 include free shipping, so stop by SwordfishGear.com today. All right, so we're going to be rigging up some squid for deep drop sword fishing today. Uh, this is the method that I prefer, and uh, I'll explain a, a couple reasons why as we get into it. First and foremost, these squids are nasty, they're fresh, they stink. You definitely want to be wearing gloves. Uh, the last thing you want to be doing is trying to eat your sandwich tomorrow uh, when you're on the boat and uh, you just can't get that stank off your hands. Pretty gross. So your wife will definitely appreciate it as well. Uh, secondly, I prefer to rig my baits the day before at home. That way, you know, you're not on a boat, it's not rocking around, and you have the time and effort to make a nice bait with a nice presentation, and everything is 100%. You know, this is big game fishing. If there is any weakness in your rig, these fish will find it, and they're gonna put shame in your game. So. Uh, when you're fishing for trophies, you need to make sure that you are 100% focused, ready, and your game's tight. After you rig up these baits, I recommend you probably do at least four. Uh, you're going to have one for your tipper rod, one for your booby rod, and at least two backups. You know, if a shark gets one or one gets thrashed but not hooked, you want to have baits ready to go. When that bite's hot, those fish are there, and you need to be ready to deploy right then and there for the next fish. Just like if you were fishing for, for bluefin, you gotta have that flyer rigged and ready to go. Uh, when the time is hot, the time is now. So keep that in mind. All right, so we start with uh, 400 pound Tess. Uh, Eyes line's pretty good. I also like the Miomi Extra Hard. We're gonna use just a tube, and I've already filed this down on the end here, so it's a little bit easier to slide through the bait. Rigging needle, wax line, Standing block for the hook. Uh, we're gonna use beads and I'll, I'll show you show you how those fall in line. These are a little on the small side. I like ones that are a little bit bigger. Crimps, chafing springs, swivels, and we're gonna be using uh, Fudo hooks. Now there's still a debate on whether you should use a circle hook or a J hook. And traditionally I'm a circle hook guy. I, I prefer using circle hooks for almost everything, except for swordfish. And the reason why is they have this giant bill and they're a finicky eater. They don't always just come up, swallow bait, turn and, and run. Uh, they're usually whacking it with their bill, slashing it, trying to beat that bait up and kill it before they eat it. And more often than not, that circle hook is never gonna make it to the corner of their mouth. And you know, here's a picture that uh, was on social media that shows just the same thing. The guy used a circle hook and this hook went through the top of the bill, out the bottom. I mean, think about the physics that has to happen for that to happen. So uh, I'm gonna stick with J hooks, although you have a chance at losing fish, uh, I think you have a better chance at hooking more fish. So that's the reason for that. So these are the hooks, uh, the food hooks that come from surfishgear.com. As you can tell, they've already been sanded down to a point and they're, they're, uh, they kind of turn into the inside. And this is the standard uh, tuna hook from Fudo. See that the, the profile is just a little bit different. So I'd say the ones from surfishgear.com are a little bit pr uh, less prone to foul hooking. And um, the reason why I like these hooks is the it's a small inlet. Um, you can take a look at the mustad hooks. Here's a picture of it right here. Um, the ring inlet is really big and it moves around. Or even with 400 pound in chafing guard, I mean, there's not a whole lot of movement in there. So. That's why I like these better. Your hooks need to be really sharp. So a quick test is to drag them on the top of your fingernail and make sure that they grab. If not, you need to sharpen them and uh, you can do that with a block. Quick pro tip. Sometimes uh, when you cut these really hard leaders like the Miomi extra hard, when your cutter cuts it, it kind of mushrooms the end a little bit and it can be tough to get into your crimper. If you put it in almost right in when you cut it, on the diagonal, you can actually eliminate that mushroom and create a nice point, which will slide into your crimps a lot easier. All right, here's our setup. Now, there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, but this is the way that I was taught and uh, I like. 
So obviously chafing spring through the hook. Uh, this is not tight yet, so you, so you can tell, but we're gonna go through the crimp, back up through another crimp. One side goes through the beads, one side goes around to another crimp, and you're gonna adjust the full length of this based on the size of your bait. And uh, you'll, you'll see the reason for these uh, once we get there. But once you get adjusted to the right size, then you can crimp it. Now the purpose of the beads is to create a split in the line so we can actually sew through that gap uh, once we have this inside the squid. Now people that use a mustad hook often actually sew the rigging floss through the eye of the hook. And I want to keep anything sharp away from the business end, the working end of the rig. All right, so here's a big nasty squid. So you want to line up so the beads are all the way up at the top of the mantle and that the hook should be coming about, about halfway out of the beak so the tip aligns with it. Now that you got the length figured out, go ahead and start crimping all of your crimps. All right, so first thing you're gonna do is cut out the beak. This bad boy right here. Then you take your rod, find the mouth, and you're gonna slide it up through. Now it's important that when you work this up the mouth that you need to come out the top of the mantle absolutely dead square and centered. Just like so. Now that that tube's in there, you can go ahead and slide your line up through the tube right through the middle of the bait without any obstructions. This little tube makes it much easier than trying to fish it through the entire bait and uh, have it get lost in the middle. And it also helps guarantee that it comes out right at the top, dead nuts every time. Once your leader has passed through the top of the mantle, you can go ahead and slide out the tube and put that aside for now. You're gonna pull your leader all the way through the bait and you're gonna have a little bit of tough time pulling the beads and the crimps through, you know, through the mouth. And then you're gonna pull it until the beads are all the way at the top of the mantle and the eyelet of the hook has been pulled partially of the way through the mouth of the squid. You'll know when it's pulled all the way through when you can feel the beads in the top of the mantle and you can't pull it any further. Now this is where I found that people's styles tend to vary quite a bit when it comes to sewing these baits together. I prefer just two areas to stitch. The first area we're gonna stitch is right through the top of the mantle where those beads are and we're actually gonna sew in between the, the, the piece of the leader where the beads split it apart. And what that's gonna do is we're gonna secure the, the mantle from sliding around on the leader. And I just, I, I go in three spots, through the beads, below the beads, and above the beads. And as long as you're pulling it tight, the top of the mantle is not gonna slide up or down the line. And to be honest, that's all that really matters. The rest of the bait should swim, you know, naturally and look natural. Once you got all your sewing done, make sure everything is nice and proper tight. Cut off all your loose ends. And you're going to grab the squid by the top of the leader and make sure that the top of the mantle does not move when you shake it. Now, the last part of the bait that we're going to sew is the uh, tentacle portion or body 
to the bottom of the mantle. Now, you don't have to go wild with this. We're just gonna sew it in a couple places and we're gonna keep it a little bit loose. We still want this bait to look real and look lively, uh, but the idea is that when this thing gets whacked, that uh, the, the top of the mantle and the lower portion of the body don't split and become separated. We wanna keep this thing looking like a squid for as long as possible. After you trimmed off the last pieces of your rigging floss, go ahead and grab the bait, hold it tight from the top of the leader, and make sure that you have a nice, proper presentation for a swordfish. Now, some people like to use skirts when they're fishing their squids. Some people like to get the natural presentation. If you're gonna use a skirt, I highly suggest that you cut off the little winglets It'll make uh, putting the skirt over the top of this thing a lot easier and securing the skirt to the mantle also easier. Now, if you're gonna have a nice presentation without a skirt, I would recommend leaving the flaps on. The current is gonna move those things around and it's gonna give, again, a more lively presentation. Once you've decided on a skirt, go ahead and feed the leader through and pull it down over the top of the bait. The skirt already has a little head on it, so as you pull it down, you'll feel the bead slide through into the head section of the skirt. Make sure you pull out all the loose pieces of the skirt. They got pulled inside as you're pulling the bait through. Again, presentation is everything, and you need to give this 100%. Once you got it in place, go ahead and use more wax floss and you're gonna tie this one really tight. In fact, I use two pieces just to know that it's not gonna move. Pull as tight as you can, you'll know that those beads are in the right location when you come tight and they slide up towards the top end of the leader. Once you get that rigging floss tied really tight, go ahead and again, cut off those loose ends and make sure that we are given the best presentation possible. You should be able to grip the top of the squid and it should hang no problem and it should not slide around whatsoever. And that's it. Just crimp on a swivel when you're ready to go and this bait is ready to fly. You can find links in the comments today for all the things that we use to purchase and hope you enjoyed. If you like what you saw today, you can subscribe to our channel or follow us along on Instagram and Facebook. And always remember, share the stoke.